Hi everyone, it's John from RFM Calc, and today I'm talking about WooCommerce. So WooCommerce is a free open source e-commerce plugin for WordPress. WordPress being one of the most popular CMS platforms in the world. It was originally released in 2011, uh, and since then it's become very popular. Um, I think mainly because it's free, but also because of the simplicity of, of setting up and managing it. And it now powers many millions of e-commerce stores around the world, generating hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in yearly revenue. So it's actually a really good platform. It's a great starter platform and it can extend as well. And it does, as I say, power, as you'll see on the WooCommerce site here, some pretty big brands as well. So today I'm going to talk about how do we export orders from WooCommerce so we can import them into RFM Calc. We're then going to take a deep dive into that export file and understand what columns are in there, what data WooCommerce exports. And then we're going to talk about how to import that back into RFM Calc to generate all the reports, such as lifetime value, average time between orders and so on, uh, that you want to get for your WooCommerce store. So this is the dashboard from the test WordPress install I've set up. So we're running the, the very latest version of WordPress and I've already installed uh, WooCommerce. So you can see WooCommerce adds its own section here. If I go home, it's got its own little dashboard. So this is the latest version of WooCommerce as well at the time of re uh, recording. Very easy to install and set up. And you can see this gives a little overview uh, of total sales, orders and so on. Um, I've set up for the purposes of this some test products. Uh, but then I've also set up some test orders, so I must just give a little shout out to this very useful plugin that I installed. It's called Order Simulator for WooCommerce by 7519 Media. And what's, what that's done for me is over the past few weeks, I've been generating some test orders uh, automatically for the purposes of this video. So as I go to my order screen, you can see I've got all my test orders in here. Um, with all the various details. Um, so these are all pretend customer names, so I'm quite safe showing you to them. I can go into an order, which will load shortly. And you can see some test products as well, and a basic overview of the order here, showing what they've ordered, the address and so on, customer email and phone, and so forth. So much like any e-commerce platform you'll have seen before, really. Now, as you probably know, to get the orders from WooCommerce into RFM Calc, we need to export them as a CSV file. Uh, now, this is where we get a little bit stuck because unfortunately, WooCommerce doesn't have a CSV order exporter natively built in. So unlike Magento, which does, unlike Shopify, which does, uh, there isn't a way to export orders out of the box with WooCommerce uh, as a CSV file. But never fear, there are plenty of modules out there, uh, including a great free one called Advanced Order Export for WooCommerce by Algol Plus. Um, so this is in use, you can see on over 100,000 uh, WooCommerce stores. It's actually really simple to install as well. So if I just go to plugins and add new, I can search for it here. And there it is. So all I have to do is install it. And there we go, ready to go and activate as well. And so that's now installed. Now, depending on your WordPress and WooCommerce setup, you may have to manually install uh, modules rather than being able to do it through the, the web admin. But fortunately, I'm able to do it uh, directly here. Now, if I go to WooCommerce, there's now a nice option in the menu called Export Orders. So I'll go to that. And this is the new um, export order module, this one here, Advanced Order Export for WooCommerce that I've just installed. So this is free. There are some paid options, obviously, if you want to upgrade and get more options. But for what we need, um, this has everything we need to export a CSV suitable for RFM Calc. So all we need to do is just set a few of these options. And to be honest, I tend to export the full order file anyway when I'm running reports on RFM Calc. So there's not a huge amount here that you need to customize. And so we've got the filter orders by order date. That's fine. We don't need to specify a date range, although you can if you want. Uh, for the format, we want to specify CSV. Uh, now, this gives you a few more options here. And um, you definitely want to leave the uh, column titles ticked as the first line. So leave that option selected. 
Uh, for the rest of the fields, you can leave them as the default. Um, order ID descending, that's fine as well. And basically, that's pretty much all the settings you need to, to add here. So you, there's more filters you can add. You can obviously filter by date range, as I mentioned. Um, but that's really the standard options for this module are absolutely perfect for RFM calc. So that's all we need to do. So I'm going to save those settings just to make sure they were successfully updated. And now I'm going to export my CSV. So as you can see, this is starting now. Um, it's not the quickest export, but what it's doing is doing it live. So it's not doing it on a cron job. It's pushing the file straight to me, but it's doing it in a, in a way to prevent the server timing out and also so it can handle quite large data sets. Um, so I've not used this on a huge data set, but my understanding is it can handle pretty large order files um, without kind of freezing or, or timing out. So that's great. So I'll just pause the recording because obviously you can see it's fairly slow and I'll come back to it when it's uh, a bit closer to finishing. Okay, so it's taken a few minutes, but we're nearly there now with the export, 99%, and there we go. So that's the export complete. Um, and it's just going to push that now as a CSV file to me via the browser. And there you go. You can see it's generated the CSV, uh, which we can save now. Okay, so now we've got the CSV file exported via this free uh, module. Let's have a look what the data looks like. So here we go. Here's an example file that I set up um, using the same module recently. Um, so I'm just going to go through, first of all, the overall kind of architecture of the file. Um, and then we're going to talk about the individual columns as well. So the first thing to know is that the orders of exporting newest to oldest by default, uh, which is absolutely fine for RFM Calc. I think there is an option with that plugin to export the other way around if you want to. Uh, but either way, it's fine for RFM Calc. So fine to leave that as a default. And um, the second thing to know is that this WooCommerce export works on a multi-line per order basis. So you can see all these orders here uh, have the same order number that ties them together. But that's because this order has multiple products. So each different product, as you can see here, is listed on a different line of the CSV. But what ties it all together is this order number. Um, so that's no problem. Uh, RFM Calc can handle that as well without any issues. And um, what you'll see is even though it's a multi-line order, all the key information is repeated on every line. So Shopify, for example, just has that key order information on the top line and the product information on subsequent lines and um, tied together by the order number. Uh, but this WooCommerce export has all the information and uh, pretty much everything. So the address, um, the order total and so on, the payment method, all repeated on each line, which kind of makes it a little bit easier to manage, I suppose. Um, so looking at the fields, we've got the order number, we've got the order status and the order date. Now, because I've set my um, store up in, in the UK, it's the UK date format. Um, you've got first name and last name separated, um, which is useful. So some e-commerce platforms will store or, or at least export the first name and last name in one column together. Uh, but this WooCommerce export separates them, which is, which is useful. You've then got the uh, billing address. And you've got the email address for the customer, which is very important. We'll need that. You've got the phone number. And you've then got all those fields repeating for the shipping and delivery address. And because obviously WooCommerce allows you to deliver orders to a different address than the billing address. We've then got things like the payment method, and the order subtotal, and things like how much was paid for shipping, uh, if there's been any refunds. And then you've got the order total as well. So that's the order total is the subtotaling uh, plus the shipping. And you've then got the products, as I detailed earlier, uh, which have their own individual item costs. And if you've used the discount code, um, the details of that will be included in this CSV as well. So it's pretty comprehensive. It covers all the fields, really, that you should need. Um, I think it's uh, pretty straightforward, though. There's nothing complicated here. Um, but it does have all the data that you, that you need for RFM Count to generate the report. So that's great. So once you've got your CSV, the next step is to import it into RFM Calc. So now I'm just going to detail how to do that. If I just go to my RFM Calc account here, I'm going to create a new project. So we'll call this test WooCommerce. Uh, so the default project currency is set to pounds because I'm in the UK. That's fine. 
Now for the order date, because if you remember, I said that this is very much in a European date format, uh, you can have situations where, let me just see if I can find an example. So if I go down to an earlier date, uh, probably not a great example actually in this file, but you can imagine um, because of the slashes, you can have, um, whereas in Europe, it's day, then month, and you could have a scenario where it appears the same as month, then date. Um, so what I'm going to do is to make sure that's not an issue is force European date interpretation. Uh, and that will eliminate that being a problem when RFM calc comes to interpret that date column. Um, as discussed, the date, uh, the orders running this file is newest to oldest, but the auto detect is fine. Um, and then that's pretty much it to set up the project. It's as simple as that. So we've now got our test WooCommerce project and we can schedule our first report. So what I'm going to do is upload my file, the raw file that I've uh, recently downloaded. So that's uploading now. Um, and what this is doing now is obviously uploading the file itself to RFM Calc. It's also doing some checks on the CSV file uh, to make sure it's a valid CSV, to make sure it's got valid columns and valid rows. And so it's doing a little bit of validation at the same time. And so that's gone through, no problem. And now we just have to map our columns. So order ID, if you remember, is handily named order number in this export. Uh, and then order date is the order date column. Currency code, uh, there isn't one in this CSV, and that's fine because all the orders are in GBP. Uh, so for the order value, you've got a couple of options. You can either use the uh, order subtotal, uh, which excludes shipping, or the order total, which includes shipping. So I'm going to use the order total because I'm quite happy for that to be included. And that's the uh, total amount the customer has paid. Now, the order status column isn't necessary. Um, it's called order status in the CSV. You don't need this. All this allows you to do is um, filter out orders uh, by a particular status. So if I go down here, you can see most of them are completed. We've got some processing as well. So for example, if I wanted not to include processing orders uh, in the reports and only include those orders that are completed that you know therefore shipped, that would normally represent, then I can put that in there. Now for customer ID, there isn't an internal customer ID that's exported with this CSV file. That's fine. What we would normally recommend anyway is to use the customer's email address. That's normally pretty safe. And um, so if I go to, uh, where has it gone? Email address, billing. And um, that's a great customer identifier to use normally. Uh, so what that means is the first time that email address is used by a customer, they'll be treated as a new customer in the RFM count reporting. And then every subsequent time that customer comes back and places an order with the same email, they'll then be treated as a repeat customer. And that's kind of the basis for, for working out a lot of the data in the RFM cart reports. Um, you can exclude certain customer IDs, uh, in this case, email addresses, if you want to. And then we've got a few more columns uh, to map here. So we've got the email address again, uh, the customer phone, which is here. Uh, first name and last name are separate columns in this export, which RFM Calc supports no problem. And then also uh, company, which I, where has it gone? I did just see it. Hang on a second. It's definitely in there somewhere, isn't it? I saw the company. Oh, there it is, after first name and last name. So all these columns do, these aren't essential for the RFM Calc reports in, in any way. Um, but what this will do is in certain places in the report, we'll generate lists of customers. Uh, we'll also produce a CSV if you're on a sufficient account plan uh, with customer data in. And um, so all this data pulls through to that. So you've got a nice list of customers there with their email, their phone number, uh, their company names, so contact details that you can then use for, for various CRM systems and so on. Um, Finally, if you want sufficient, uh, a sufficiently high account plan with RFM count, you can map custom columns as well. And so probably the easiest one here is payment method, um, which is quite a common one. If you've seen my other videos with different e-commerce platforms, that's always a nice one to look at. And so what this will do is this will generate additional reports in your RFM Calc report and um, showing for these custom columns various data, such as the lifetime value based on, in this example, payment method, and the average time for a customer to place a second order based on the payment method, the total spend uh, based on that payment method and things like that. So it gives you kind of the options there to generate additional data for the report really easily. 
Uh, and of course, with it being a CSV, you can of course add more columns to the CSV yourself manually and, and set up custom data before you upload it into RFM Cal. That's absolutely fine as well. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to give uh, this a little report name. Um, you've got the option here to anonymize customer data. So if you don't want real names and email addresses appearing in your report, you can set that to yes, and that will just filter those out. It won't uh, it won't affect any of the numeric data, but it will just stop real names and emails being published in the report. Um, and then the last option is to overwrite the default column mappings for this project. So what that means is all these column mappings that I've set up above, um, if I set, select this, next time I schedule a report under this project, I won't have to do the mapping again manually. It'll just remember all those settings. And it'll remember things as well, like the uh, status exclusion list as well. And that'll be saved against the project too. And that's pretty much it. Um, so that report is now queued. Um, basically, that, that will go in to the queue now with RFM Calc. In a few minutes, I'll get a little email saying the report's been generated and that will uh, generate the report for that data showing things like lifetime value, average time between orders, uh, full RFM uh, analysis as well. Uh, there's a full customer cohort analysis, so some really cool charts and, and, and tables and, and data um, that are generated off the back of that. So that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Just to summarize, we've spoken today about uh, WooCommerce, how to export orders as a CSV in WooCommerce. We've taken a deep dive into that CSV file to understand the columns and the data that CSV contains. Uh, and then I've just taken you through as well how to create a WooCommerce project on RFM Calc and how to update that CSV uh, back in. Uh, upload, I should say. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So in my next video, I'll talk about all the different reports that you get out of this and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go into that in more detail. But for now, um, that's everything for this video. So thanks for watching. Um, any questions, just uh, drop us a line. Thank you. Goodbye.